Just a Concerned Citizen by Damel on AO3. Chapter 14. Introduction. They went in carefully, mind jacked flanked by Tokoyami on one side and Tentacle on the other, earpiece in, to communicate with the backup they had waiting just off sight. Van Black had sent in a few updates before going MIA, though Hitoshi wasn't sure he would have needed them. He studied the blueprints Midoriya had found extensively, and nowhere on them was there a mention of a basement level. Tentacle was able to hear movements from below, and it was a work of minutes to find an access hatch with a ladder. The lower floor was made of the same featureless concrete that the ceilings beneath the warehouse had been, and the entrance they found opened up into a long, empty hallway. Tentacle moved in first, letting them know that there were people down here, but not many. Hitoshi had hoped that they had managed to surprise them, and hoped held out until they stepped into the next room. It was similar to the warehouse, big metal tanks and pipes, roof high enough for there to be catwalks, and Tentacle shouted an abort warning that there is someone in the room with them before something went skittering under their legs, leaving a trail of smoke behind. They had been expecting quirks of presence. Whatever this was made Itoshi feel like they were suddenly asleep, and based on the way both of his teammates had fallen to their knees, they were feeling it too. Tokuyami sent in the call for backup before collapsing entirely, but Itoshi knew that the people they had waiting outside wouldn't be enough for this. The numbness was creeping into his chest, but his arm still worked, and he used his capture scarf to pull himself somewhere away, a corner to huddle up in. He was already losing democity in his fingers as it was. He didn't have time to give many details, just location to all his contacts. This had happened before. They would see it for what it was. He didn't read the text he had gotten, and the fact that he had concerned citizen, save on his real work phone, and not one of his many burners, didn't even cross his mind. Izuku wasn't the first to arrive, by a long shot. He'd had to take a ten-minute train ride just to get to the district that the manufacturing plant was in, and then he had to run. The wait had been tremendous. He hadn't dared send off another text to Mindjack, not knowing the situation he was in, and didn't actually have Shoto's number. And well, neither hero was probably checking their email right now. He probably should have left a note or something, but he didn't feel like he had the time. As he pounded pavement towards the faculty, Izuku just reasoned to himself that he could find another one of the heroes on the scene and explain it to them. And there were a lot of heroes on the scene. Apparently, when Mindjack called for backup, his friends knew that he'd meant it. There was a small crowd gathering a hole in the fence around the building. Not the size that would show up by a normal villain fight, because from outside there wasn't much to see, just a smoking hole in the inside of a building. Izuku heard the name right before the wind shifted, and he smelled it. Really? Ground Zero went busting in like that? Someone in the crowd was saying. What do you think they're doing in there? And it was faint. But Izuku didn't think he could have ever forgotten the chemical burn caramel smell of nitroglycerin. As desperate as he was to keep running forward, to grab someone and tell them what was going on, that stopped him dead in his tracks, dread and panic crawling up his throat. He didn't know what Kachan would do if he saw him there, and that was kind of the problem. Would he be ignored? Attacked? Dragged away? Or perhaps even worse. He'd gotten into the factory and was just as in trouble as Mindjack was because of him, because he didn't figure out fast enough. He forced himself to swallow the fear and kept moving forward, glancing around to get a better picture of the situation. A rabbity was there, making sure that no one from the slowly gathering crowd ran into danger. He spotted some other heroes around, or rather, the support staff of several agencies that he vaguely recognized. Shoto's was the most obvious, and most panic-inducing because, great, he was on this mission. 
he was pretty sure he recognized some people from Crea and Chargebolt's agency, at least. To say nothing about how many underground heroes might be there, too. Pushing his way through the crowd wasn't very difficult, given that there wasn't actually much to see. People were dispersed all along the fence line, trying to clutch a glimpse of one of the pros they cared about. There were more in front of a rabbity, sure, but she had done a good job of making it clear that she wasn't signing any autographs. Her usually cheerful demeanor replaced with a hard frown. She looked as stressed as Isuku felt, which... fair. He wondered if she had any contact with the heroes who had gone in, but based on the way she kept glaring back at the building, the answer was probably no. Someone had to know, and she was the hero he could see right now. Hopefully she had been reading into the case already, but depending on the timing, anyone who could have done that was probably gone before she had arrived. Uh, excuse me, Arabity? He swallowed as the brown-haired hero sent him a pained smile, probably about to tell him that this wasn't a good time. I need to talk to you about, uh... He gestured at the building and leaned in in hopes that the rest of the crowd would have a harder time hearing. I think I know what's going on in there. I, I'm Izuku Midoriya. I'm an analyst on the case. His breath stuttered as the hero fixed him with a serious look. She looked interested, but not convinced. And that wasn't enough, because if there were heroes inside the building, then there wasn't time. Look, I... I work with Mindjack. Shoto and Xylophone can both confirm it. I just... I figured out something that the heroes should know, too. The ones I work with are... in there, I think. Arabity frowned only deepen, growing significantly more sad and conflicted. Listen, I know you mean well and all, but I don't think we could have this conversation here, and I can't let you through if you don't have proof. I'll just call a psychic over and you could talk to them, okay? She didn't believe him. Why would she, when people had no doubt tried even weirder things to get closer to a fight? And the trouble was, he really didn't have any proof. He had left all his files back at Shoto's agency, and it wasn't like he had been given an ID, just some heavily restricted log confidentials. Chances were, whatever sidekick she'd call over probably wouldn't believe him either. Well, he didn't have proof, but he wasn't just some guy either. I... He took a shuddering breath and willed himself not to cry. I've emailed you before. Not about this, but, uh, other things? A few times? The biggest case was the serial killer and me. I've emailed a lot of your friends, too. Uh, there was the drug ring and Shiruzu, and, uh, there was the guy who went missing. In the joint, I sent Earphone Jack. And, and Mind Jack noticed them and asked me to help with this case, and now he's in there, and I think he's in trouble. Please, let me help. He only managed to keep himself from lapsing into full mumbling because he was so afraid. Both for the heroes in the building and of being rejected. Shinso had been the first person in a long time to let him help. There was no guarantee that Arabity would be willing to extend him the same mercy. But as he spoke, her eyes grew wide, and at his last statement, she shot at a hand that gripped his wrist tight enough to hurt. Oh my god, you're... Arabity started, and then stopped, other hand coming to cover her mouth. Okay, you're gonna come with me and tell me everything. Arabity called a pair of sidekicks to kick over before dragging him off to the side, to the tent with a sort of forward operations center set up underneath. He recognized a few of the heroes underneath, but given the situation, he had to ignore their curious glances. So, you're the concerned citizen, huh? Arabity hardly gave him time to get his bearings, but at least she didn't sound so bleak anymore. I have a lot of questions for you, but for an now, let's focus on this, right? Izuku finally let himself breathe again. Right, well, the short version is that what they have down there is probably a gas that can paralyze anyone with a quirk. I think the best thing to do would be to call in a hero like Gale Force, who could disperse it without getting near. Oh, that's... Arabity grimaced, but started typing something into her phone as she spoke. Bad, but coincidence with the little we know. Gale Force is a while out, but we could probably get at least an instructional fan or something in the meantime. 
Izuku didn't know how she was keeping her cool right now. He didn't know how he was, either. Even the amount of time it would have taken for a fan might be too long. There's another option, he swallowed. If I'm right, a quirkless person would be immune. They'd go in without issue. What? That's way too dangerous, and I don't know if we could find someone who would be okay with doing it. Besides, Izuku froze for a moment, and then sucked in a deep breath. He had never had to reveal this part of himself to someone quite so fast. I'm quirkless. It was the first time he had said that phrase out in years, and his tongue stumbled for the next words. And I want to help. I have no problem putting my life on the line to see if my theory is right. It's what you guys do all the time, right? He didn't know what he looked like, but Arabity met him with a gaze that was steady. I think I get why Mind Jack was so interested in you, but I can't just let you run in there. Please. He couldn't be denied. Not now. I don't want to go fighting any villains, but if I can drag someone out of there, it might save their life. Arabity smiled at him. You didn't let me finish. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. Her hands clamped back on his arm, and she started leading him towards the hole in the wall. I have the extendable ropes on my costume. I'm going to attach you to them, and if anything seems the slightest bit off, you're getting pulled out. There's at least one person who should be able to get out. This wasn't what Izuku was expecting. She was trusting him. She had known him for less than five minutes. She knew, and she was trusting him to do this. And there was no way she was acting like this out of pity. Not when the stakes were this high. No. This was somehow all him. She was willing to let him do this because of the emails. Because she thought he had been helpful. Unfortunately, he didn't have time to get emotional over that realization. As Arabity had led him through the hole in the wall to stand over an open trap door. And next to it was a very nervous and concerned looking charge bolt. Charge bolt, she greeted. This is Midoriya. He's a concerned citizen guy from the emails, and he might be immune to the gas. Oh, shit, said Chargebolt. Nice to finally meet you, dude. Finally, as though it was a thing he'd been waiting for, Izuku took the offered hand, and Chargebolt shook it before immediately letting go and pointing at the opening in the ground. Rie is, like, right there, so if you could just... He gestured vaguely at the room below. Izuku crouched down and cranked his head to get a better look. It was hard to see what exactly he was pointing at. The lights were flickering and there was a thick blanket of dark, blushy smoke hanging low to the floor. And there, just barely visible through it all, curled up on the ground was an unmoving curie. He has a gas on, he mumbled more to himself than anyone else. So the toxics must be invading through the skin contact. He could see a rabbity's nod from the corner of his eyes. Then she said, Listen, I want you to be real sure that you're okay with doing this. You're technically just a civilian. I am. He didn't even have to think about it. He was the one who was supposed to have figured this out in the first place. Who else is down there? For a moment, it looked like a rabbity wasn't going to answer. Expression growing conflicted. But whatever she was thinking about didn't turn out to matter because Chargebolt blurted out, Mind Jack, Tsukuichi, Tentacle, Shoto, Ground Zero, Pinky, maybe Van Black, and he gestured again, Creaty, and possibly some civilian. Isiku added. Uraka's head whipped from him to Chargebolt and back, and she sighed. Well, no point in sending you in without all the info, and that's pretty much all we know. She reached for the front of her gauntlet and started unspooling the rope from somewhere inside it. Some small part of Izuku itched to make notes on it, even after all these years. Hell, maybe he would if he remembered to once this was all over. Rabbity wrapped it around his chest and shoulders, knotting the complicated setup together in a practice movement. Then she patted him on the shoulder. Okay, if anything happens... If you start to feel even a little weird, just say something and I'll pull you back, all right? 
Another hand clapped his back, and Chargebolt said, We got you, man. Izuku sucked in a breath and clenched his fists tight. He still wasn't sure if he was right or not, and now he was about to put it to the test. There were so many factors that he just couldn't take into account. Well, he supposed in the end it didn't matter. It wasn't like he had much to lose. He swung his legs through the opening, and quietly as he could, managed with his heart beating in his ear, made his way down the ladder. There was no dramatic moment, just a few simple steps through the swirling smoke as he made his way over to Kreidi. He paused for just a moment as he got a look further down the hallway past the doorway. The lights flickered, and if he squinted, there was what might have been another figure on the ground, though he couldn't tell who. The places where the smoke touched his skin tingled just a bit, and he reminded himself not to breathe too deeply. One thing at a time. He pulled the pro's head over his shoulders, in as much of a fireman's carry as he could manage. Internally thanked his mom for making him sick with going to the gym, and then went back to the ladder. He was only a few rungs before Chargebolt and Ravity were reaching out to pull their unconscious friend from his shoulders. Careful, he warned. I think you might not want to touch her with bare hands. Whatever it is, that gas feels kind of sticky. Izuku stood on the top of the ladder and watched as Chargebolt tested her vitals. Not good, but not life-threatening. This would probably require a hospital visit to recover from. And really, for someone like him, saving even one person should have been enough. He'd just pulled a pro out of somewhere where they had been in danger. A pro who was no doubt far more capable of saving lives than he was. But for some reason, the thing that kept running through his head was that old video footage he used to watch over and over as a kid. He was nothing like All Might. It was stupid of him to ever dream he could be, even as a kid. He was nothing like All Might. It was stupid of him to ever dream he could be, even as a kid. He was never going to be capable of rescuing everyone from a burning building or put everyone at ease with just a smile on his face. But that didn't mean he couldn't do something. In fact, right now there was a chance he was the only one able to do anything at all. Someone else was close by. I'm going to go back for them. And then, without waiting for an answer, he did. My, my, my. I don't have notes. I didn't take notes for this one. I don't know why I didn't take notes. Normally I take notes. I don't know why I just didn't write down notes as I was reading. I guess I was too emerging the story. But we finally get Izuku being a hero and uh, very interesting gas stuff. Very interesting. A rabbity believed him. I mean, of course, it's Uraraka, who, pff, duh. I also love, um, I want to talk about uh, Charge Bolt and his kind of cool demeanor right now. I hope I made this pretty clear that he's like, yeah, dude, hi, yeah, with awkward little pauses because although he is pretending to be cheerful and stuff, right, like, yeah, dude, welcome there, like, breathe, right there, right, right, mm -hmm, right there, mm -hmm. um, I added little pauses in certain um, places and stuff like that to emphasize the fact that, yeah, no, he's not 100% okay, he's, he's what I like to say, faking it till he makes it. You know, in his mind, he's like, okay, if I just sit here and worry, 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 nothing's going to get fucking done. I just need to, you know, figure something out, right? Um, also, I love that Izuku's getting the recognition he needs. He very desperately needs it. Um, I don't really have much to say. As I said, I didn't write notes for this one. But as always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.